it's 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 only a few pages when they put your name in a column and so how many people have been tailhook embarked on carrier navy pilots the vast majority get out of the navy so they never you know they may have 200 300 carrier landings at the end of their eight-year career so getting a thousand is hard mm. and you know sometimes their budget cuts and it gets even harder so I'd say it's kind of a one percent thing, but I'd I'd have to ask uh, the Naval Aviation Museum about that one. Sounds good. Yeah, I'd love to know about that actually, because I mean it's it's an incredible achievement, and um, obviously, yeah. like you mentioned and touched on already, one of your other incredible achievements. I mean, to be a commander of anything in the military is just amazing. But when you have something like Top Gun, which is regarded as such a prestigious thing. I mean, that's just one hell of an accolade. So I'm just fascinated. So tell us about it. You were commander at Top Gun. So can you tell us how that came about for you? And what were your objectives and responsibilities as the commander? Because obviously Top Gun is a it's a school. So what were your sort of what were the yeah. tasks there? Uh, well, let's let me tell you how it kind of it leads leads up to becoming the CEO of Top Gun. Sure. So throughout my entire naval career, there's nothing I wanted more than to be a Blue Angel. I applied two different times, once as a junior officer to be on the team, did not get selected. I applied to be the commanding officer of the Blue Angels. I was selected as a finalist. I went down and I interviewed and I didn't get chosen. So I always say one door closes and another opened. And so I came back from that, a little disappointing, but you know that's the way it goes. But you know, I did throw my hat in the ring. It was something I always wanted to do. I thought, you know, I think I'd be good at this. I had a lot of time in the Hornet at that stage, but that's the way it goes. Breaks of naval air, we say. So this opportunity came up and I got a call and I said, hey, would you think about being the CEO of Top Gun? I thought, wow, sure I would. So I had to submit some articles that I had written Put a little resume together. I think it was a three-star admiral that was going to choose who was going to be the uh, next CEO of Top Gun. But what was unique about my resume was the fact that I had flown the Tomcat, and I had over a thousand hours in the Tomcat at that stage, and I had it instructed in it. Every commanding officer at Top Gun, nineteen of them that preceded me were well, they were fighter pilots but they were primarily F4 and F14, mostly F14 pilots. So now we were in this transition to where the F18 was more dominant on the flight deck and in the fleet. And they said, hey, it's probably a good time to flip it over to the F18 community to have you know, the commanding officer do that. So I had already commanded an F18 squadron, the VFA-151 Vigilantes, and it was off of that tour that they said, okay, you've already commanded a squadron. This is a different unit, it's larger. We had about 35 airplanes when I showed up there, a mix of planes. We had F-16s, we had F-14s, F-18s. So this hybrid and most of your uh, most of your people that work for you are civilians, believe it or not, and some Navy. But the staff were Navy and Marine Corps, the pilots and the NFOs, okay, the, the mm -hmm. Rios. So, it's a very unique position. It was down at Miramar. I was the last uh, commanding officer at Miramar in San Diego. And I was fortunate enough to be selected. So I was the 20th commanding officer of, of Top Gun in San Diego. But I was also the guy that ran up to Fallon, Nevada to stick a shovel in the ground and go, OK, let's start the building of the academic facility and the hangar there. And, you know, of course, Fallon's a long ways from uh, Miramar. And that's where you see much of the second movie. That's that's the Fallon Ranges, uh, high desert, we call it, up just to the east of Reno. Wow. So that was my job. And uh, I was chosen. I was fortunate. It wasn't the biggest job that I had in the Navy. I, I was later on, a few years later, chosen to be an air wing commander. And that's when you have nine squadrons, about 2,200 people, and then you're embarked on a carrier. To me, that was that was the real gem in the crown of my naval career was to command a carrier air wing be called the cag that's the that's the term a carrier air group commander and so I, I think anybody you know in tactical aviation their aspiration is to say hey i'd love to lead a squadron getting top gun was fantastic but to be an air wing commander was frosting on the cake so that was uh 
that was the culmination of my career and that amazing what a just amazing 